Anita here and welcome to another video. Today I am doing a very sweet illustration but most importantly I am experimenting again. <laughs> As you can see in the background I am wetting my paper and being very very frustrated about the paper curling up. But what I'm planning to do is actually make it wet enough so that it can stick to the background, to the table. And so hopefully I can paint on it and it will dry without buckling. Yeah. <laughs> so I got this idea, um, the very first time I saw this technique was this video of a, of a very famous background artist, <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Kazuo Oga from, from Studio Ghibli, um, among other. Um, and he was painting a forest uh, during rain and um, that's what he did. He pay He wet his paper, it stuck to the surface and then he painted on it and the paper stayed flat the entire time, even when it dried. Um, at that point I wasn't really paying too much attention to it, but eventually, uh, quite recently actually, I started looking into um, just gouache painting and poster um, paint painting, which is pretty much the same thing. But a lot of those artists, the background artists, are uh, first wetting their paper painting wet on wet so that everything is nicely blended and the paper dries uh, flat. So I wanted to see if that would actually work for me. So I've chosen this really, really simple illustration. Well, simple. It's not really simple, but the, the idea is simple. These are my starry sheep from one of my previous paintings. They are floating through this sunset um, sky uh, because what happens, if, you, if you're not familiar with my starry sheep, <laughs> they are... Um, basically, they're sheep. They're that's what stars are made of, from oh, out of sheep, you know, because that makes perfect sense. So what the what happens is that at night they are uh, you know shining in the sky, and then uh, during the day they are resting somewhere in the land of giant mushrooms. <laughs> so I wanted here to show because they change color. Um, at night they are very bright and shiny. Um, and then at uh, during the day they're supposed to be blue. At least that's the current state of affairs. And um, so during sunset they actually change a lot of colors. During sunset and sunrise they change the color and they are, you know, shining with all these colors. So I wanted to kind of capture that, just play a little bit. And it's a very, very simple idea. So I could really concentrate on uh, playing with the... Um, with that with that technique as you can see the paper is staying flat so far um, and, and see how it goes you know I'm not losing any detail because there's not much detail in this painting it's purely for fun and playing with colors colors is the most important thing in this painting because I'm trying to get a gradient effect from yellow like yeah it's not really yellow it's like a orangish yellow all the way to purple uh, almost like a cool almost like it's turning already blue. <laughs> so what what happens here is that I've painted several base layers, just added color, uh, just blended it together and blended beautifully because of course I'm painting wet and wet, wet on wet, excuse me. Uh, I had a little bit of, and you can see it kind of around the edges, I had a little bit of a trouble with the water uh, going backwards and blooming into the paint. So what I did at some point is that I put actually some toilet paper over the under the edges just so that the there wouldn't be just too much water because I tried there wasn't water around the edges is my point. I think it just I put too much water maybe under the paper, you know, this is the first time I'm doing this. So just the water started pulling into the back into the paint. So by putting a little bit of uh toilet paper underneath the edges, it just whatever water was pulling from underneath, uh, it would be stopped. And it worked per per oh, excuse me, perfectly fine. I'm so excited. <laughs> it worked perfectly fine. Uh, it's just that that's why there is this like a bit risen edge. I, I kind of think that if I left it the way it was, it would just dry completely flat. I was so extremely surprised that this paper stayed flat. I was expecting buckling. At this point, it's not yet exactly completely um, dry. The back side is slightly damp. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not. It's it's it has a little bit of moisture. You can feel it. It's not wet. It would I wouldn't even call it damp, but it was still 
there was a little bit of that, that not exactly dry feeling. <laughs> so, but I could still paint on top without the you know paint getting all funky like it does when uh, the surface doesn't dry completely. So I was actually so pleased. Now the only problem, which was a little bit unexpected, um, was that I actually didn't expect that it would take so long to dry. Now it, when I think about it, it makes sense, okay? But um, I had to, well, that's why, I, because where I am at right now, I am in my living room. <laughs> if you're following me on Instagram, you will know that because I, I kind of, you know, I, I'm really active on Instagram lately. So uh, I moved there because the uh, table in the living room is a non-porous surface, which I needed for this technique. Um, but what had happened was that I wanted to start painting this, which is the elements needed for the top layers, but the paper was still wet. I couldn't really move it anywhere. <laughs> so uh, I remember that I had this acrylic sheet in the uh, tool shed and I cleaned it up and it worked perfectly fine. And from now on, I will be using this technique on that acrylic sheet. So I don't have to necessarily be downstairs because the light, uh, you know, when you're painting with natural light, it, it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, as you will see further um, into the video. <laughs> I still, I think I did a pretty good job, you know, at uh, just recording with daylight. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> so here is, um, so I'm kind of done with the background with the paint, uh, it's drying on the, on the side. And here what I'm doing is uh, I'm working on the elements um, and I've decided to paint the sheep. Uh, with all different colors of the background. So there is, I wanted to bring in even more yellow of that warm yellow that almost breaks into the orange. And every single ship has a, a little bit of a mixture of those colors. Now, the problem is that I've, I'm painting this on the bamboo mixed media paper, which I'm trying to use up because there's, I have a lot of that paper and I, I you know, with me and paper, I have my artist paper for painting and that's when I know that I will be using, um, like in the case of the background, that was artist paper um, because I needed heavy paper. I needed to know that there is nothing wrong with the paper, okay? That whatever I do, it is, it's wrong with the technique or my use of the technique and not with the paper so that the paper, for example, will absorb too much water because I know my artist paper. So also when I do a lot of blending, I will uh, use the artist paper. Now for this thing, when I knew that I only wanted really flat colors and then I would be using a little bit of colored pencil on top, I've used the, uh, like, like, I call it, you know, che cheaper paper because I don't need it to perform really well. I just needed to be, uh, I just needed to be sturdy. And um, that's really what the mixed media paper is about because uh, of course it's not, it's a mixed media paper. It's not a watercolor paper. I can't expect from it that it's going to be like my, you know, Arches paper. However, the problem here is that even though I was using the exact same technique and I was, as you can see, I'm being very caref careful with how I apply the paint. There is no blending. I'm just adding uh, thin layers of paint over dry areas because they dry completely before I put anything else on them. Um, I don't show it here, but they turned out just really, really bad. There was a big difference in the quality. Uh, you could see that they looked much cheaper, much um, just, they didn't look good at all. They d it, it wasn't nice. It wasn't something that I wanted to look at. Um, and it, it like sometimes, you know, textures and, you know, a little messiness is, is good. But in this case, it just looked bad. So um, I actually, instead of recording, I just turned it apart. And last minute, I remembered that, you know, perhaps it's a good lesson to be learned. I shared it uh, with my patrons. And uh, but this was just um, I was so disappointed that I put away this painting for almost two days. Uh, just thinking about what to do, how to fix this, if I should just restart painting those swirlies, um, if I should do something else. And um, so you can see me doing everything else right now. Um, I'm doing the uh, background, adding colored pencil to the background. And uh, I have a bunch of colors I picked from my, uh, from, from the box. This is the Arteza. These are Arteza colored pencils still. I really like them. I, I seriously like them. However, I have only, uh, because I'm still not sure about the light fastness of that thing, 
of those colored pencils, so I'm only picking the ones that have the highest uh, light fastness. Um, I, I probably should make some kind of test swatches, but who has time for that? I'm gonna wait till someone else does it. Okay, I am so bad right now. <laughs> Um, so I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm adding those colored pencils, trying to add texture, enhance that um, gradient, add a little bit more interest. I just really like that. You guys know me. So it's just a very important step for me. One another thing I didn't expect about this uh, painting is that this painting actually, uh, since it's not attached, it's much easier for me to turn it around. And I do it without thinking. And uh, what I do when I'm recording videos, I always try to keep my painting uh, level so that you guys don't get, you know, eye problems <laughs> from me just twirling it around. But here, especially when I was using the colored pencils, and this is quite a big uh, paper, by the way, because I'm painting on a bigger size. Now I'll tell you in a second. Um, but I was just like, I've noticed uh, at the very end that I was having it, I was having this paper in a different, uh, in a vertical position, so horizontal, I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> now luckily it's just one uh, clip and then I was much more conscientious <laughs> of this problem. So for example, with the sheep here, I'm not moving, as you can see, I'm not moving the paper at all. So this is me basically repainting uh, the sheep because at this point I've already decided what to do. Uh, I went to the art store and I got myself a bunch of vellum. Uh, <laughs> I, I had a little bit left, I needed more, I needed bigger sheets. Um, and I will make those cloudy bits, the wispy bits out of vellum paper. Uh, you will see it in a little bit. Now why I needed a bigger size is that because I'm actually painting on an A3 uh, piece of paper. My regular size is A4, so it's double the size that I'm normally working on. Because recently I've been feeling like I wanted to paint on something bigger. Uh, I've been nagging about it, uh, like, I do, like, okay, um, I, I'm doing this podcast thing for my patrons as a weekly thing, it's an update. And I've been nagging about, uh, through the entire podcast, about how I want to try and paint on a bigger, bigger size and how, you know, it's a probably like very big, like meter by meter and a half. And then I chickened out in the end and painted an A3. But, which is what I kept telling myself, it's still bigger than what I'm used to. <laughs> it was, it still makes me laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's much smaller but it's still bigger than what I usually do. <laughs> so I needed a different camera setup for this. I needed different, um, you know, angles. And my camera is usually, it's, it works best with an A4. Anything smaller or bigger, I need to adjust the camera. <laughs> um, like, I mean, the tripod, not the camera, the tripod. I have a still a very old tripod. And um, especially that I was working downstairs in a completely new environment for me where I've never painted this way. Um, this is, by the way, what I meant with the weird lighting. I've been painting this very late into the evening and there is this blue cast over everything. It goes away in a little bit, don't worry. Um, but it's like a reminder to myself, don't paint in the evening, okay? Paint during the day because the colors are much better and there's better light for your videos. <laughs> So, um, so basically because this piece was so much bigger, I've realized that I didn't have enough of my own vellum for, um, to make those wispy clouds, uh, to replace the ones that failed. By the way, I would like to mention how much nicer it looks on, because I'm painting now on Arches paper, how much nicer it looks when it's on proper paper. I am just stunned. I mean, it's something obvious, but still, you know, I, I thought I could use that paper. And I'm not bashing the paper at all. It's it's not a watercolor paper. It's just, you know. So here I am. And here are the clouds I already made beforehand. I was not exactly sure what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do them. So I did that off camera. They came out good and I'm very happy. However, as you can see here, I'm kind of uh, putting them up because attaching vellum is a very tricky thing. I've mentioned it before. But if it's this big... Um, it's even trickier and it's very exposed. 
Now, you see, any adhesive that I put under a vellum is going to show to a certain degree. And here I really wanted to have that vellum a little bit higher because I wanted it to almost blur what's underneath, but I still wanted to see the colors and everything. I just wanted it to be a little bit blurry, so it needed to be raised a little bit more. So I'm using those little um, uh, have like foam cubes. They are the, the tallest ones I have. And I'm placing them strategically. Like seriously, assembling these pieces is a very strategic kind of thing. Okay, you have to be really careful where you're placing your stuff. Um, because I've decided then that um, these little cubes, the little uh, adhesive, I would turn them into little um, like fire lights, fireflies, um, or stars, or just shiny bits. So I will be painting over them with some, um, you know, with, with just with, with gel pen, with just my gel pen. I wanted to say paint for some reason, because I was entertaining the idea of using um, acrylic ink, which I have, and I don't really use it that much, but uh, I'm still much more familiar, familiar with the gel pen, so that's what I chose. And so I'm attaching it now, and it looks really good. And now I'm turning those little cubes uh, into circles and just adding little dots here and there, little shiny, so that they look just like as if they were shining. Like, like you know, like the cube underneath is a little bit smoother. It's actually not visible. You can see it if you know that it is there and if you know that, you know, what to look for, but it's camouflaged. <laughs> it's camouflaged. Now, um... In this case, um, the sheep that's on top of the wisp, the most purple sheep, uh, that sheep is actually on uh, two layers of foam tape. Uh, it's, it's the most, you know, most raised sheep. And that sheep is also keeping that vellum in, in place. And so in this case, of uh, the case of the next wisp, as you can see here, I'm placing sheep on top of it. And the adhesive from the sheep is also keeping that in place. So I didn't actually have to place too many, um, you know, too much tape under, um, under the vellum. Because that's what you want to do. You just want to camouflage it in some way. Because you want, as you can see here, I need, I wanted it to be a little bit higher. So I've added that little uh, cube so that it was a little bit more secure and it blended a little bit better. Um, but then I'm also going afterwards and adding the little shiny bits on top. You know, the assembly uh, of the piece is always what's most interesting because it, it requires such a different way of thinking to me than just your regular painting. Because really, you, you can do anything you want. It just needs to be, you know, you, you, you're not thinking about how to paint, you're thinking about how to glue it so that the glue is not visible. Um, <laughs> so, for example, here I'm using the uh, double-sided tacky tape. It's not raised. And that tacky tape on a light background seems to be really nicely disappearing. It's, it's not visible almost at all. I'm still putting a little bit of white uh, gel pen on top of those uh, pieces of tape, just to, you know, just in case. Um, it's, it's not, it wasn't necessary, just in case. And then I'm adding all the white details to the sheep and to the background because of course the sheeps, uh, sheeps, mm -hmm. the sheep are shiny. They have stars on them. They have, you know, little glittery bits. Um, and so I needed to add that. But first of all, you know, I wanted to add all the other <laughs> white bits that I knew would have to come on top of the vellum because that would kind of affect, you know, how much I could add in other places, um, in what position and so on and so forth. Now, uh, this piece was actually, <laughs> as you can see, it's very, very simple, but the, the most thing that was important to me, and of course the camera is not going to be able to pick it up, but the color, I love the color. The colors are so juicy, so candy-like, and just looking at it makes me so happy that I'm actually planning to put it up in my room, uh, in my studio, <laughs> because it just makes me so extremely happy to look at it. Um, the only problem with it is that it's an A3 piece, and as with every A3 piece that I've done, I have no idea. <laughs> um, well, of course I have an idea, but I'm too lazy to scan it, which is a, a problem. I really have to get myself an A3 scanner 
Um, because, you know, I, I really want to make more of these big pieces. They are so much fun to make. There is just, it's so big and, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be that um, detailed. Because now I'm just, what I'm doing right now, and I'm adding the detail in the form of stars and little, you know, little shiny sparkles, even though they're not really shiny. I don't know why I keep calling them shiny. You know, shiny is the white bits. <laughs> Um, but that's detail, that's the magic, I'm just, you know, and I'm so, so excited. So I don't know if I'm ever actually going to paint on the even bigger uh, paper for now, uh, mostly because, not because I don't want to anymore, but mostly because uh, I don't think I have enough space. Even that A3 piece was just kind of pushing it a little bit. Um, I was working from my living room. That's, you know, the, the table that I have. But if I want to work in my studio, you know, I have that acrylic uh, board right now. And that thing is just about an A3 size, as you could see it before. So mm, I don't think I'm going to paint anything bigger, but I would like to do more A3 pieces because they're fun. Okay, <laughs> here's a closer look. Uh, you can see a little bit of that texture. I wanted those sheep to look very, very smooth, but still soft, you know, like the softness of the wool. <laughs> and um, But it still doesn't show the color and how juicy and vibrant it is, even though I tried to adjust the colors as best as possible. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and my little ramble. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Uh, if you decide to try or to paint without tape, um, or just, you know, wetting your whole paper, tell me how how it was. I'm really curious. Or if you've already, you know, if you're painting like this already, then please tell me how I can prevent the water from seeping uh, into my paint afterwards. And also, you know, that I'm still learning. And um, yeah, if you would like to follow me on Instagram, there are links in the description. Instagram and Facebook right now seem to be my, you know, social media of choice. Instagram more. I'm really addicted to Instagram stories. Like, really. <laughs> and if you would like to support me even further, you can uh, find me on Patreon. Even for as little as one dollar, you can get a lot of access to extra behind the scenes, you know, footage and pictures. And it helps to support me. So, yeah, thank you so, so very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!